What's up guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be working on this 2013 Ford Explorer. It doesn't look like a, a, a complete Ford Explorer, but let's uh, back up a little bit here. Some local lady per put this up on Marketplace and I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm a big Marketplace guy. I'm always on Marketplace. Uh, looking for deals and whatnot but yeah some lady put this up on marketplace she didn't want to deal with her insurance she didn't want to deal with fixing it she just needed an excuse to buy a new car so she put this up for sale for a fairly cheap price and i went and scooped it up i was the first person there and like three people showed up she for some reason she thought it was a good idea to give everyone everyone the address but i was the first person there and showed up cash in hand got the car by the way this car does run and drive i i drove it here it took about an hour to bring it back so the bumper was cracked right here and that's a new frame support whatever they call that got that on there the radiator support you can see it's got a little bit of cracks here and there but that should be fine doesn't affect anything the coolant's not leaking or anything like that uh, i might have to look at the washer tank there might have to get a new fender liner the lower bumper and i can show you guys the bumper inside and i'll put a picture here somewhere but the the, the lower bumper and the lower part of that bumper basically cracked right here and wasn't salvageable i mean i could have done that plastic welding stuff to it but it's better to just get a new bumper and not deal with that uh hood's good fender's good other side's not even touched um the other side i still still has that headlight good i did get it with the headlight but the headlights cracked so i just went ahead and ordered some new headlights as a matter of fact here are the headlights inside all right, so I got one and the other ones are probably still in the pool barn. But a uh, little reason why I like this car is it's actually really nice. We've had a Ford Explorer in the past. This one does have the panoramic sunroof. It's got uh, your screen. I don't, it doesn't have navigation, but it's got the heated leather. Has 120K on the dash. And that's miles, by the way. Uh, third row seating. And that was kind of like the, the biggest reason I wanted to get this car make it a, a nice family car it's got the cool black wheels like the the sport black wheels and uh yeah it's it's not the eco boost sadly however for what we need this car for it'll do the job all right so <coughs> check it out so i was about to send it the other day i went to my local hardware store and bought some rust-oleum white spray paint and i was about to just like spray paint it white but I spray painted a little bit of this of that white on this piece of plastic right here and i don't know if you guys can see that it's different and i'm glad i didn't just decided to send it uh yeah so if you can see it's got this like ford white it's got like it's almost like a, per a pearly color or something so what i did toss that away all right so what we did was if you go into your vehicle and with ford you go to your vin number area and you look where is it at where is it at where is it at and you look at your exterior paint color right exterior paint that code right there ug you type that up in google uh and it'll show you that you know ford ug and that's what you need okay so now let's get down to the whole purpose of this video so you guys saw the car you guys saw the kind of white that it is colored and how it looks like that pearly color and it's not actually white white so since i'm not going to be doing the the aerosol spray can method of just you know getting your white spray paint from your local hardware store i went ahead and i wanted to try this new thing out well i don't know if it's new but it's newish to me uh, it's where they put your your paint coated paint i don't know if this makes sense you, they put your paint coated paint into an aerosol can, right? So check this out. We'll, we'll talk about this right now. So what I did was I got on Google, specifically eBay. I put in Ford UG, that's our paint code. And you know, I looked up paint, a uh, Ford UG aerosol can, that's to, to be more specific. And this is what showed up. So they take your, they take your paint that's specific to your VIN number or spe specific to your paint code and they put it in spray cans for you. I do have a p air compressor and I do have the spray guns, but that's inconvenient. I'd say that's more for like if you're painting large sections, uh, like if you're painting maybe multiple, um, you know, body panels of the car or if you're painting like a whole, you know, I don't know, 
side of the car, then maybe I'd go that route. But if we're just painting one part, so one piece, we're just painting a bumper or a fender, I'd highly consider this, you know? And considering the price range, so like a pint of this stuff or this paint code is like, I don't know, I, I was looking it up, it was like 55 bucks shipped to my house. Whereas they give you all this and then I think I paid around 70 bucks for this. Now I know that's still a little expensive, but it's, you're, you're factoring in the convenience factor. So, so check it out. So with, with this paint code or Ford UG, it's called a tri-coat paint. So it's basically multiple layers. So it's, we've got, we've got your Ford UG and this is your first coat, right? So this is going to be that white, right? So here we'll spray a little bit. So that's going to be the white. And then you've got your mid coat, right? And that's basically like a, that, I'm guessing this is what has a sparkle, you know? Uh, and then you've got your clear coat that you're gonna apply at the very end. And primer obviously is what goes on before everything. But I just wanted to make a video and give this a try and see how it comes out. Now I am by no means a professional painter and you know, I'm gonna get a lot of haters, uh, you know, commenting down below saying, oh, you don't know what you're doing. You're not in body, sh body work. And you're correct, I'm not in body work. I don't do this every day, but I'm just painting a bumper and it's not like, you know, I'm looking for showroom quality, although that is the goal, you know, we're gonna give this a try. Now, I have painted stuff in the past with spray cans and it's come out great. And when I mean I've, spray, I've painted stuff, I've painted like, I don't know, like a, a trim that I added to a bumper or wheels, for example, you know, but uh, wheels are a little more easy. You can just plasti dip them. Uh, but I have actually like rattle can paint wheels and they came out great. Let's talk about what I'm going to do here. All right. So you don't have to follow my technique. Uh, this, the whole purpose of this video is just to see like how my technique comes out with this, with these spray, these spray cans. All right. So let's, let me walk you through this. I probably won't go into too much detail because I'm experimenting myself. Right. And if it does work out, then maybe after this time lapse, I'll go ahead and tell you guys what I did. All right. But fingers crossed, hopefully this is going to work out. Uh, let's talk about what I did as far as prep. Here we have the body panel or the, the front bumper that we got from, uh, I don't know, our parts place. Uh, I ordered this somewhere local. So it comes to you basically in a ready to prime state. So it's basically just a bare plastic bumper. Uh, and you can just, I don't know, clean it off and start, you know, prime put it adding a primer then start painting on it however i took one extra step you take this little like brillo pad or scuff pad whatever you want to call it you can get this from your local um heck i think you could just find this at your local grocery store uh but i got this from home depot they're only like 50 cents or something and you just take it to your your bare plastic bumper you're gonna scuff it up a little bit uh not too heavy literally you're just going back and forth just creating a little you know just it's still a smooth surface, but you want to create a, a bit of a scuff. That way, when the primer goes to uh, adhere to the surface, it's got a better adhesion. Now, I could be wrong. So anything I'm saying, don't take it to heart. Okay, guys. All right. So after that, after you're done scuffing it, uh, I took my water and dish soap solution. This is not Windex. Here, let's turn it. There we go. It's a water and dish soap solution diluted. Went ahead and sprayed it generously, then wiped it down with my microfiber, let it dry for a little bit. And then I went ahead and did my primer. So this is the primer that I ordered, or not ordered, this is the primer that I got already because I, I was planning to spray paint it just with the rust oleum. But um, yeah, I use this, but in this video, I'm going to advocate for this one. So you're better off, because it comes with a primer, right? So you're gonna use your primer, get a nice, I don't know, layer on there, maybe two coats, three coats, I don't know. You can comment down below and let me know what your suggestions are. And then let that dry. So I had the courtesy to let this dry for a couple days while I got this in the mail. Now that this is here today, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start painting it. Now I did wash it again. So I actually just waiting for it to dry a little bit more. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, spray paint it. Now, before you guys spray paint, you always want to factor in the safety part because you don't want to get dizzy and die or, you know, get sick. But 
here we are we're in a garage well ventilated obviously because our garage door is open if you want to take things a little a step further you can turn on a shop fan uh what else you want to get yourself a mask something like that so you're not inhaling all that chemical and yeah well lit area and uh, make sure it's at least well like 50 or 60 degrees because uh, if it's too cold the paint will dry all weird and stuff so yeah i'm gonna set this up on a tripod and just do a time lapse i'm gonna go ahead and start painting if it comes out great then i'll show you guys what i did but yeah So here we are. This is after primer and our base coat. So uh, apparently our base coat wasn't enough. Let's see, where's my base coat? Uh, this emptied out fairly quickly. And according to the instructions, it says that it'll cover like a four and a half by four and a half foot uh, surface area. And I guess, you know, this is probably more than four and a half, four by four. So, uh, what I did was I sprayed a little, a little blob of it right here, and then I sprayed a little bit of the, the Rust-Oleum Gloss White next to it, and they, they're pretty close. They're pretty much the same. I think what's gonna make the um, the paint look different or like match the the rest of the car is this mid coat. I'm guessing this is where the magic is gonna happen. So, and luckily. For the mid coat, it's a light coat compared to um, the heavy coat of the, the actual the base coat. So I ran out of my base coat and then I just, I basically finished spraying it off with my Rust-Oleum White. And it, no complaints so far. Obviously you're gonna probably get an orange peel and I'm gonna let this dry for several hours, maybe even overnight and I don't know if we could see that. I don't want to get too close. Yeah, you can see it's got a bit of an orange peel to it, but it, it looks fairly decent. Uh, yeah, we're gonna let this dry and then put our, our mid coat afterwards. All right, guys, so here's the bumper. It's been several hours. I think I'm gonna go ahead and apply that uh, mid coat. So if you see right here, it says mid coat. So that means that goes in between the base coat and the clear coat, I'm guessing. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get a time lapse. All right guys, so check it out. Here it is with the mid coat done. And I guess it's kind of different spraying it out of a spray gun versus out of a out of an aerosol can. Out of a spray gun, you know, you'd, you'd kind of do like passes like this or, you know, go all the way, like, you know, you start before the edge and go all the way past the edge, you know, and, and so forth. But with, with using, a, using a spray can, I guess it's a little different. And I just kind of, I don't know, I did, it's just an awkward range of motion. Uh, so I just, I just kind of went, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And then you could probably see in the time lapse. I, over here where it gets kind of weird, you know, I just kind of, I go from like this edge, go all the way to that edge. And, you know, I just keep spraying. Uh, it, it takes, you know, a couple or several passes to get that practice down. But what the tricoat does is, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it, it gives it that kind of like, that yellow tint, you know, like that pearly tint, I guess you would say with that sparkle. And now that we're done with our, uh, our mid coat, it's according to the instructions, I think we can go ahead and apply our clear coat. Once I apply that, then I'm just gonna go ahead and let it sit for a few days. I'm, I'm in no rush to, you know, install this on the vehicle. I'm just more anxious than anything to just 
get this thing done. Let's go ahead and get the clear coat on. I think with the clear coat, we can be generous. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just let it dry and go from there. result and I don't know if the camera will catch this but uh, I am actually really happy with the results you can see that it's got that Ford sparkle in it and it's got that kind of like pearly uh, offset white to it so yeah I think this is gonna you know match really good with uh, the rest of the car compared to just a plain white that I was planning to use $70 rattle can job versus, you know, if I took this to a shop, they would have probably quoted me anywhere from two to, I don't know, $400, give or take. And, you know, just being able to save that couple hundred dollars and being able to do this myself uh, kind of justifies why I did it. And it's not like, you know, I'm putting this on a Lamborghini or something. Uh, this is going on our, our family SUV. This is our personal vehicle. And, you know, if, I don't think anybody would even like tell that this was a rattle can job. Like it's, it's actually really great. Like the, there really isn't a, um, an orange peel to it either. So you, sometimes you can get like that orange peel or uh, if you spray it weirdly and it's like too cold outside and the paint dries weirdly, sometimes you can get that flaky texture. But uh, I, I didn't get any of that. I mean, here and there, there's a little speck of dust right there, but that's okay. Uh, and that might be able to, you know, get removed with uh, some wet sanding. And that's why I applied a, a really heavy coat of uh, clear coat. Because with the clear coat, now that it's got a really thick layer of clear coat, once that dries up and I can go ahead and wet sand it or like give it a, a quick buff, that clear coat gives me a bit of a cushion to kind of like, you know, sand down, but I'm not, necessarily sanding it down completely, but it gives me a bit of a cushion to, uh, you know, smoothen it out, if, uh, if you get what I'm saying. But, yeah, I think that pretty much sums it for this video. Let's see. Yeah, overall, I'm super happy with the results. I think it came out great, considering, you know, like I said, it's a rattle can job versus like a professional spray gun job. Um, if, if you have like a fender or a small, like, uh, I don't know, body panel that you just want to paint, uh, and you're worried about, you know, taking it out to a body shop and having a pin and all that and dealing with the quoting and all that. I recommend doing it this way, you know? It saved me a whole bunch of money and I'm doing it in the convenience of my own home or my garage. So yeah, um, if you have any questions or if you have any crude remarks, just move on to the next video. I know there's gonna be uh, body paint people uh, that are going to be on here and be like, oh, no, that's a crappy paint job. Like, I don't care. It's not a Lamborghini. It's not a McLaren. Uh, heck, even if I did have a Lamborghini, I might consider doing it this way. I'm actually really happy with the results. Hopefully, this video helps you out if you're someone like me and you like to do a lot of your own DIY projects. Yeah, let me know if this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, comment down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, and hopefully, I'll have all your answers. Hopefully. But... Yeah, uh, feel free to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really motivates me to do more of this kind of content. In the next video, the next video will probably be us putting the front bumper back together and assembling it on the Ford. Yeah, so we'll see you in the next video.